Hello, welcome back uh, to Business Reviews uh, Media Corner here at IM World uh, 2017. We're gonna uh, attack, so to speak, uh, a difficult topic from my perspective, but an industry which is growing rapidly in Romania, I think, is, uh, and is also helping the economy. I'm also always talking about uh, e-commerce. So I have with me three players in the industry. On my right, uh, Mr. Uh, Florin Filote, director of Mark Marketplace. Hello. Here him is uh, Vlad Stănescu, city of Blugento. Okay. And next to him, uh, Samuel Poloja. If I Samuel know. Poloja, yes, Poloja. that's correct. You are a business development manager at Exponea. Correct. Marketing automation platform. Okay. and. Uh, I just want to to break the ice, so to speak, and uh, I want uh, to ask you a general question about the the outlook of the e-commerce market uh, next year here in Romania. What are some of the challenges you see on the local market, and uh, what are some of the innovations you are bringing uh, in the industry? So, shall I start? Why me? <laughs> <laughs> you are the biggest, uh, representing yeah. the biggest players. So. Yeah, actually, uh, if we are going to talk about uh, the challenges of the e-commerce next year, uh, for sure one of them, or, or one of the biggest, uh, will be uh, the operational side of the business. And here I want to, to mention the, the logistic side. Yeah. Uh, actually, what we uh, already saw during the last years is the fact that uh, the couriers are not following uh, the development of of this market so actually due to this uh, aspect we are not, not growing as fast as we could grow uh, and on the other hand uh, the clients uh, are frustrated because uh, they receive uh, their parcels uh, with delays or they are not receiving their parcels at, at all okay. And uh, basically, this is what we see as the, uh, the biggest challenge for, for next year. So aligning everyone on this market in order to uh, fulfill clients' needs. But you also bought a delivery firm earlier this year. Is, uh yeah, yeah we, we invested in same day this year. Uh, but uh, let's say that with this investment, we will not change the market anyway. And uh, we want to develop same day uh, towards uh, a premier uh, delivery okay. courier with premium services, two hours deliveries, uh, deliver whenever you want. Uh, we already launched it uh, last week, I think. Um, so we are still counting and we will continue to, to count on the, the existing couriers. What about uh, Blugento's outlook? Uh, for the market? So, beside the excellent points on the logistics that Florin just made, uh, I could touch uh, perhaps on the technical side of what we'll see over the, the coming months and uh, next year. Uh, on the technical side, we'll see a lot more mobile, and I think this will become we, this will come in the form of progressive web apps, so that even uh, people even without installing the app could get an app-like. Uh, uh, performance from uh, the website and then I think we'll see the rise of uh, the rise of uh, our augmented reality a lot especially since uh, Apple uh, came on board with uh, with it on its newest devices and we're seeing some players like IKEA, Ikea playing with this uh, concept and uh, allowing you to place the furniture inside your house and then purchase it directly we'll see some uh, races in artificial intelligence and big data so that recommendations can be made uh, for products in a more intelligent uh, manner and uh, of course we'll see uh, websites going faster and faster and trying to make uh, more intelligent functionality for their users what's your outlook for the local market well i cannot cannot agree more with Vlad uh, in terms of uh, that we definitely will see the rise of uh, of automated data processing we seen it with our clients we are already entered the market with uh, with some of international clients who are entering Romania and they they have very good traction and i believe that uh, that others will follow and the same way as programmatic was was a big thing uh, a couple of years ago it will shift to the marketer side to the processing of first-party data by by 
you know, automated machine learning and you know, other uses of artificial intelligence. So I believe it will be a good year also for us and we, we are really focusing on this market and we like that it's still growing and it's still growing very fast and it creates a big opportunity for us as well. Okay, and so Florin, uh, uh, are you, is Emag looking at new ways to, to present your products, I mean to improve the overall purchasing experience and I'm talking about virtual reality, are you exploring this, uh, these technologies or can you tell us a little bit more? Uh, yes, for sure, we are always looking uh, into such uh, new technologies uh, that will help the consumer improve his journey, uh, his purchasing journey, let's say. Um, and um, I, I want to point something uh, based on what Vlad and Samuel already mentioned. Uh, the idea is that uh, uh, for the mobile technologies uh, and uh, the processing of data, we already saw this trend and uh, imagine that uh, uh, this year we expect more than 64% of our traffic coming from mobile devices. Okay. Coming back to your question, um, we really think that uh, augmented reality and uh, virtual reality yeah. are kind of new technologies for the Romanian market, for the Romanian consumer. Uh, I really think that we are still into the, let's say, developing the artificial intelligence okay. uh, algorithms in order to improve their, their experience, customer's experience. Uh, so we already uh, did something uh, towards this. Uh, Is like it a test? Uh, it's not a uh, test. We started pilot. developing some uh, algorithms uh, in order to improve uh, the personalization of the website. So the algorithm is learning based on your previous surfing experience or surfing uh, habit uh, and is showing to you uh, the categories and the listings you already searched for. Uh, also we also improved the, the algorithms for the, the search bar uh, and also there um, we are trying to make the algorithm learn how our clients are searching for their products because um, you can imagine uh, there are a lot of, of clients uh, who, who don't know exactly uh, the exact brand name or the exact article name and they are missing a letter or I don't know spelling it wrong whatever so we have to uh, learn from from what they are writing what they they are typing and to show them exactly what they want actually uh, we are also trying to develop uh, some bots in order to improve our customer care uh, and uh, this is, let's say, uh, this is was not la launched yet, uh, but hopefully we will uh, we will be able to to to, to teach uh, to to make them learn Romanian in order to let's say be able to answer fast to to, to the questions, the of, questions the of, okay. of the consumers exactly. And can I have a question on this please, one? Please, Samuel. Uh, did you did you already implement this solution? Did you? Yeah, part of some of these solutions are already that? implemented. Uh, some of them are uh, still in test. Uh, we have um, I don't know a technology like a technology center, a research center inside of Imag, and we are always looking forward towards uh, implementing uh, new technologies. But once again, coming back, what I what I want to to uh, make very clear I really think and we really think that um, for the Romanian e-commerce uh, augmented reality and virtual reality are too much at this moment and we are not ready yet we are not ready yet yeah we okay. still have to learn how to deliver in time <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> more pressing issues yeah 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 uh, Vlad, I had a, a different question for you, but it's also for all of you because uh, I'm surfing some, of, I'm visiting some of these online retailers and they have uh, a poor experience in terms of, especially on mobile. Um, okay, the market is growing rapidly, uh, people are buying more and more online, but uh, 
what do you think has to happen on the owner's side? Because those, some of those sites are uh, quite bad. So. so what we're seeing currently in the industry is that more and more products are moving to the SaaS thing, uh, SaaS uh, type of model. For example, uh, even three, four years ago, to create a search that's as performant as the one on EMAG, would be something that would be just completely unavailable to a small merchant. But today with services like Algolia, they are becoming something that you can afford with uh, under 100 euros a month. So we are seeing uh, uh, more and more availability on these types of services. On the mobile side, uh, for example, having a mobile app is something that makes a lot of sense for a big player like Emag. Mm -hmm. But for a small store who maybe has 50 or 100 uh, orders a month, it doesn't really make sense to invest into an iOS application, to, into an Android application. And what will uh, happen on the mobile side there and really improve the experience is the progressive web app uh, approach. What that will allow is uh, to add the application to the home screen and behave just like a native application, work offline, load content very fast, send notifications to the user. So uh, it will become uh, more and more harder to distinguish between an application that's installed from the App Store and what's progressive web app. And the advantage there will be that the store owner needs to invest in his store, in his web presence that works on desktop, on mobile, and can offer this experience to everybody without having to double or triple his investment into other platforms as well. Okay, and uh, um, okay, I, I had another question because I was discussing about this with uh, in previous panels mm -hmm. because they, everybody was saying mobile is driving everything. Yes. In your case, from what I understand, uh, most of the sales are generated from mobile devices and from the app. Uh, do it's, you think it's be, uh, uh, let's say the traffic? Yeah, the traffic generated by the the mobile devices uh, is more than fifty percent, sixty four percent actually, and uh, the mobile app is uh, around thirty two percent already. Oh, okay. uh, so actually, our our belief is that uh, uh, you should be multi-device or maybe mobile only uh, at a certain moment in time due to the fact that technology changed com how consumer behaves uh, so um, imagine that right now we have the smartphones uh, and uh, with these smartphones uh, and having them all the time with us uh, Basically, inside our inner circle, actually, um, if you want to touch the consumer, you need to be there. Otherwise, they will not find you. Okay. Vlad, do you agree with this? Some of the new investors in uh, online retail should don't all only build uh, mobile versions, or is it too drastic? I mean. Uh, well, probably depends also on the market that you're addressing. I think for especially the younger audience, uh, being mobile first in their experience is something that uh, works very well. I think uh, even, uh, even re regarding old technologies like email, uh, there are some statistics that uh, people who are now turning still 40, relevant 15, email, 16 <laughs> are no longer having an email address <laughs> and they want to use their mobile number to log on to applications. Okay. So the traditional model of email and password is right. starting to become okay. obsolete for certain segments. So just like that, I think with uh, certain segments, the mobile application will be their first experience. And I think it's very convenient if you want to, to shop for something you can do it uh, from the mobile device, especially since it's uh, more in tune with uh, your personal use of the internet. So if you're looking at a computer, you probably use it a lot at work and yeah. it's associated to your product productivity, to your work activity. And in that case, uh, the mobile is used for Facebook. I think a lot of people are using Facebook, for example, or Twitter only from their mobile application. So doing their shopping from, from a mobile makes a lot of sense. I think in uh, today's world, there's absolutely no excuse to have an e-commerce website that's not well done on the mobile side. And uh, for, for big players, uh, mobile applications do make a lot of sense. Okay, and uh, do you fear that platforms such as maybe Facebook wants to develop its e-commerce arm? I don't know, maybe they want to sell. They are already doing something like that. But uh, maybe they want to get deeper into this, uh, staying on the, their website, uh, 
finding stuff there and making the purchase there. Generally, when Facebook wants to do something, it really does. So, uh, do you think? Do you see this as a future threat for the the e-commerce uh, ecosystem? I think uh, that uh, Facebook will develop its uh, e-commerce activity, and people will shop on Facebook. It will add a lot of uh, social interaction to the shopping process, which is uh, something that's more and more important to the young generation. But just like with uh, marketplaces, for example, I think it will be important for store owners to have a broad access to the market, to also address people who are, who are not comfortable with shopping on Facebook, to also have a certain security from changes in Facebook policy. Perhaps you're selling something that in a, in a couple of years will no longer be supported for selling on Facebook and if you base your entire business on selling on Facebook you might be in trouble with that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't think that uh, traditional e-commerce is going away but I think it will become uh, even more omni-channel beside the offline. Uh, online with better, we also with be better delivery terms. So, okay. Well that's, uh, <laughs> no, that's, a, I think that's a big he problem. A I think. <laughs> Can I add something? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't be so afraid that Facebook will take on the, the e-commerce side because they they already tried it and it didn't work that well because people do different things than, than shopping on Facebook. They do interact with people. They like to uh, do their research maybe as well or interact with brands, but they tend still to, to make purchases on the, on the website that's purposely built for, for that. So yeah, I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be afraid that even if, if Facebook builds another solution for that, that it, it will, you know, uh, grab the whole market in a few years or something. I'm not afraid of grabbing the whole market. It will work for some users, it won't for others. But uh, I think uh, it really makes sense for store owners to remain omnichannel. Okay, and uh, do, do you have this fear that uh, Facebook or somebody else will uh, take a pie from your business? Uh, uh, we are How are you working on this? We are always uh, looking forward to welcoming uh, new competitors, let's say, on the on the e-commerce market. Um, but anyway, uh, independent of, uh, I don't know, being Facebook or Microsoft or whatever the name, um, anyone might think of tackling a market, uh, having a valuation, a global valuation of over... 1,200 billion US dollars. So, actually, it's a it's a, uh, a good market there uh, for I don't know newcomers in e-commerce. Uh, we will see. Okay. And uh, earlier this morning we had a, a panel on uh, payment processors. I said this is this was another challenge that we identified because a lot of the the payments are still made in cash. How are you, is this a problem for you or how are you working to change this trend and uh, what? We are, we are always, uh, let's say, working on uh, increasing the trust of the customers because this is what matters here when, when making online payments. Uh, and uh, let's say we have a big advantage because uh, we have a good brand awareness. Yeah, uh, we always, uh, kept our promises. We always, uh, let's say, uh, assumed and uh, we, we took the, the whole responsibility if we we made mistakes. Uh, and we see already that there are a lot of um, of uh, clients in our case uh, paying for their shoppings with their credit cards. Okay. So yeah, our interest is to. Uh, make them pay more and to have more clients paying by, by credit cards. Okay. Um, the ratio between uh, cash on delivery and credit cards uh, in our case is uh, uh, between let's say 25-30% credit card and rest uh, cash. Uh, yeah, cash on delivery. Um, and this uh, um, share uh, is constantly growing okay. year over year. I believe this is well above Romanian average, right? Well above Romanian average, yeah. So but you need to you need to have a mm, trustworthy brand actually to to do it and to to tackle it. Okay, and uh, 
Another question that I had and I also talked about this earlier is the rise of cryptocurrencies. Okay, maybe some customers are using Bitcoin. Are you going to develop a platform or update your platform so you could accept such payments going forward? Or do you think this is a growth area for... As well, I already details. answered for the, the virtual reality and the augmented reality topic, uh, we are always looking uh, towards implementing new technologies. But when we will feel that the right moment has come. Okay. Yeah? So if uh, it will be the case, probably we will look into developing new payment methods uh, for cryptocurrencies yes. or other type of, I don't know, whatever will follow after this. <laughs> okay. Uh. So on cryptocurrencies, I think currently worldwide cryptocurrencies are used mainly for investing. Due to the volatility, if you look at Bitcoin at the beginning of the year, it was around a uh, thousand US dollars and now it's 4700 US dollars. So it's not really a currency that you buy in order to spend, <laughs> you buy in order to invest Let's and see. be on the growth. But as it will stabilize, I think it, uh, it will become more and more used and uh, then uh, players like Emag will catch on and others in the market will follow that trend. So it will happen in the future, but it not, it's not necessarily something very urgent currently. Okay, yes. So when we see that Emag implemented cryptocurrencies, it's the right time to do it as well, right? <laughs> so they are, okay, they are, they are all, always uh, giving the signals on the market. So this is how uh, things are. But... Uh, what sort of investments are you, you planning next year? Some, you can tell us about, so not uh, test projects, something... Uh, 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 how much are you... What, I, yeah, what I can tell you uh, right now is that uh, we have uh, already budgeted for this year uh, 100 million uh, euros for uh, uh, investing in... I don't know, technologies, new technologies, uh, researches, uh, but mainly uh, we will invest in uh, increasing our uh, operational capabilities. Yeah, increasing the productivity in our warehouse, uh, uh, making a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, things in order to improve uh, customer experience based on what they are receiving. Uh, because right now um, there are cases where uh, clients are receiving several parcels for the same order uh, and what we would like to do is to consolidate everything and uh, I don't know, make it easier for the, the consumer. So a big part of this investment will be allocated uh, to the operational side of the business. Okay. And do you see uh, room for more consolidation on the market? I mean some players taking over smaller uh, ones i mean are you looking at some uh, targets right now we are always looking for <laughs> <laughs> we are always looking for uh, for uh, new uh, let's say uh, purchasings <laughs> on the market uh, but i i really think that there is still room to to consolidate yeah the market is is big uh, there are a lot of players, there are over 5,000 uh, e-commerce shops in Romania, registered e-commerce shops. So Do you think this is a big uh, number no. for our market? No. So actually we, we no. could see more yeah. smaller firms? Uh, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately not, but this is what we are trying to do with our marketplace model. We are trying to address the offline market and uh, we are trying to convince them, all the players in the offline market, that. Uh, going to online is, uh, is the right decision uh, and they have to do it fast. Okay. Uh, to, to add to this, I think that uh, traditionally g creating an online shop was something that was very expensive to do. So if you have to spend 10 or 15,000 euros to create an online shop, it's something that's not really available. But as I mentioned with SaaS technologies like ours and other products, it's becoming more and more accessible for you to go online, invest a thousand euros to become online, and then invest in some marketing and some connections with uh, uh, marketplace channels in order to start your sale. So I think uh, due to the lowering of the price end point, we'll see more and more people going into, into e-commerce. This on one hand. On the other hand, I'm really sure that uh, uh, 
uh, anyone uh, being present uh, in the offline market uh, is looking uh, um, after uh, an increase in turnover year over year yeah and uh, in order to achieve this you have to follow the client and the client is going online actually yeah so it's not going offline anymore or okay not like 10 years ago um, we we have uh, a lot of a lot of statistics and uh, um, only this year uh, in the United States uh, over 8000 offline shops are uh, due to be closed actually okay. Um, and uh, with, uh, let's say, a relevant or a big online player in the region, like we are, uh, it's really easy to access, um, uh, I don't know, 374 million visits per year. I think this has to be interesting. Okay, and uh, at group level, uh, how fast is Romania growing compared to the other markets in which you are, which are, which are the biggest markets for you? So? Uh, Romania is the biggest market uh, in our case. Uh, we are targeting this year uh, um, a growth of over 20%. Uh, if we are talking about uh, Bulgaria, Hungary or Poland, uh, we have bigger growth there. But this is due to the, the fact that uh, we didn't enter 15 years ago uh, those markets. Uh, but Romania is the, our biggest market. Okay, and uh, I have one last question, it's all for all of you maybe. Uh, some of the retailers that still have phys brick and mortars, let's yeah. call them, are still growing. So they're, they're not going under uh, or uh, closing their shops. Why do you think this is going on on the Romanian market? Because also in, the group, in your group you have uh, a chain that uh, has also has a lot of physical stores. Uh, is EMAG exploring any uh, investment in this area? Maybe you need to have some physical We have stores, already. So we have already our have showrooms. Yeah, we showrooms, have already okay. our, already our our showrooms, and yeah, uh, uh, yeah we really need to, to be present also offline. Uh, and it's not only the the, the Romania's case. Uh, also, all over the world, if you want to be relevant, you have to be present where the customer is present. Yeah, and uh, while this the customer is still going offline to do some shopping, you have to be there as well. Okay. Uh, currently, in Romania, the e-commerce is eight times lower than the European average. While in UK it's something like four or five times above the European average. So it's clear that a market like Romania will catch on. What we saw over the years is that uh, 10 years ago when you looked at shopping fashion online, people said it wouldn't work because you want to try it on, you want to feel the material. Today we're seeing big players like Fashion Days uh, having a very important role on the market and selling a lot. Uh, a few years ago you said that you can sell food online, now uh, all the major players are starting to enter this market. So I think we'll see more and more players moving to the online from uh, the offline and I think lessons uh, international like brick and mortar stores being closed in the US with the most recent example of uh, Toys R Us <laughs> filing for bankruptcy. Yeah. I think it's a lesson that uh, other big uh, offline retailers will look at and uh, treat it like a Kodak moment. So adapt or become obsolete. Okay. Well, I think that uh, you will experience the same trend as we, as we did in Czech Republic. For instance, our, one of our brick and, uh, and nice clients, Zoot, uh, which is also present here and it's growing rapidly. Uh, they built some kind of like a network of what we can call something like changing rooms. You basically order online, you order a couple of you know, trousers, different sizes, shoes, whatever. Uh, you pick it up, you just go to the changing room, just try it out and you know, just keep what you want. And this is, this is what's happening. This is what's going to happen here as well. I believe they already have uh, have some kind of this uh, uh, this showrooms or, or changing rooms as well, and it really it, it really fits our lifestyle, right? Because we do we do research online. We we, we choose between brands. We uh, really make our shopping online, but we still have to try it somewhere. We can do it on the way home, and you know just just come home with the, with the bag of what we what we need or want. 
So uh, thank you all for the great discussion. I think we're out of time already. So one of the conclusions we have for this, uh, for the retail segment, mainly for bricks and mortars is adapt or die. So this is my conclusion. Uh, we're gonna return after a short break with uh, a new panel on innovation. It's happening everywhere. So we're gonna go deeper into this.